Elite Dangerous is an incredibly complex game that includes combat, exploration, trade, mining, and too many other things to list. Given this complexity, even the most veteran players are likely doing one or more than a few things wrong, as they enjoy their time in the Milky Way galaxy. Today, we're going to look at 13 things even you are doing wrong in Elite Dangerous. Probably. We'll start with an easy one for the beginners out there, namely route plotting. Jumping is perhaps the key mechanic of Elite, something we all must do, making getting to our destinations without running out of fuel critical. Sure, you could call on the fuel rats, but better is to not run out of fuel in the first place. We've covered fuel scooping before, and what's critical here is number one on our list, filtering the galaxy map to plot through scoopable stars. By opening the galaxy map and selecting the map configuration screen, you can set map view configuration to star class. You'll then select only the first seven stars, O, B, A, F, G, K, M, deselecting the rest. At the bottom of the list, ensure apply filter to route is selected, and now anytime you plot a route, you will be routed through only scoopable stars, whenever possible. This combined with a fuel scoop and a bit of attention should ensure you never run out of fuel and need to make a call to the fuel rats. As there are a significant number of items in systems, from stations to resource extraction sites, finding them quickly and easily can save you tons of valuable time. Sure, you can just scroll through everything on offer, but let's look at number two on our list, filtering the navigation panel. This is done by selecting the set filters icon in the upper left of the navigation panel, then selecting the type of items you'd like to see. Keeping this as short as possible will let you find the specific thing you're looking for be it a station or signal source, quickly and easily. As we talked already, jumping an elite is one of the core mechanics, something that all players must enjoy, I mean endure, no matter if they are combat pilots or explorers. And while number three on our list may be obvious to the latter, it might not be obvious to everyone else. That is honking. By honking, I mean firing your discovery scanner on each jump, ensuring that you collect the minimum exploration data for each system something you can then sell later via Universal Cartographics for a bit of easy credits and reputation. While not much, it'll at least pay for the fuel you use while jumping, right? Other primary mechanics of Elite are ships and modules. You can't really play the game without them. Much of our gameplay is based around earning credits so we can buy new, better, stronger ships and the modules that so dramatically affect the way we use them. Spending those credits wisely brings us to number four, Shopping in Leon Respace By shopping in Leon Respace, this is one of the power play powers, you'll receive a 15% discount on all ships and modules, not only saving you credits of purchase, but also lowering your rebuy by that same 15%. While that might not make a big difference on small ships, for large class ships this could save you over 100 million credits. Shopping in Leon Respace is easy. Head over to eddb.io and select Stations. At the top, enter the ship or module you're looking for, in Reference System, enter your current location, and for powers, select Leon Re. You'll then be presented a list of stations selling exactly what you need at that 15% discount. For many players, Elite is all about combat, as it is arguably one of the deepest parts of the game, especially when you take engineering into account. While having a properly outfit and engineered ship is important to combat and critical to PvP, so are your skills, bringing us to number five on the list, Active PIP Management PIPs are what we refer to as the settings for your power distribution between systems, engines, and weapons. This allows you to have energy where you need it, when you need it, making this crucial for high-skill combat engagements. Top players will either be able to change these rapidly or use macros to do so, allowing for extremely quick changes to where your energy is directed. If you'd like to significantly increase your combat abilities with a single skill, lack of highly active PIP management is what you are doing wrong. Probably. Not only is it crucial to ensure that your distributor is sending energy where you need it, when you need it, but ensuring your ship has enough power for the modules, especially weapons and defenses you'd like to run, is just as crucial. For number six on our list, let's talk about power management. Setting proper power priorities means the difference between being able to run a build or not, allowing you to outfit at usages higher than 100%. This is done by disabling non-combat modules when your hard points are deployed by setting those modules at a lower priority, with one being highest. As this is a somewhat complex topic that we've already covered in detail, please see my previous guide on power priorities to ensure you're not doing this wrong. 
While we're on the subject of combat, knowing what you're up against is also critical to besting your enemy. Are they running multi-cannons or plasma accelerators? Pack hounds or torpedoes? Prismatics or bi-weave shields? At number 7, we look at our enemies outfitting and sub-targeting those modules. Before you begin an engagement, whenever possible, you should check your target's outfitting by targeting them and scrolling through their sub-targets. During combat, you'll want to be able to scroll through their modules, sub-targeting critical systems such as their power plant, distributor, or frameshift drive. Many times, destroying a target's power plant will cause them to explode before their hull reaches 0%, and with the power plant can cause it to malfunction, possibly rendering them ineffective. We've talked about buying ships and modules in Leon Respace, but what about upgrading those ships via engineering after you've acquired them? Unlocking the engineers will be necessary for this, and while that takes a good bit of time, it's a pretty straightforward process. What isn't so easy for most, and is number eight on our list, is the most time-consuming part of engineering, material gathering. There are three types of engineering and synthesis materials, raw minerals, encoded data, and manufactured. These are stored in your ship and do not require cargo space transferring from ship to ship as you change between them. Gathering of these materials can be extremely time consuming. Rather than going into all those details here, I hope you'll see my previous guide on the fastest ways to gather any engineering materials, which covers the Commander Jameson crash site for data, the Crystal Shard sites for minerals, and high-grade emissions for manufactured, all with the use of material traders. If you're using any other methods, well, at this point, you're doing it wrong. Probably. As we discussed back in number two, using filters make it easy to find what you need in systems, but it doesn't help with the things you need that aren't where you currently are. You'll want a way to quickly plot to places you use most, which brings us to number nine on our list, using bookmarks efficiently. Bookmarking key places, such as the closest raw, manufactured, and encoded material traders, along with your home station and closest interstellar factor, means you won't have to look these up or type them in each time you need to head to them. Naming your bookmarks with a prefix, such as the numeral 1 home for your home station, so it sorts at the top, and TRD colon raw, TRD colon encoded, etc., allows you to sort your bookmarks, given Frontier hasn't given us this basic feature. While you can enter up to 100 bookmarks, keeping them in some sort of order will make them far easier to use when you need them. Sorting bookmarks isn't the only basic feature Frontier has failed to provide us in Elite. Everything from finding the previously mentioned material traders and interstellar factors, to the best places to mine, purchase ships and modules, and even what we need to engineer modules are all covered by number 10 on our list, third-party utilities. Elite has a rich and talented community of dedicated developers and creators of third-party utilities to choose from. Far too many to list here. Key tools are edtutorials.com and nara.cz, eddb.io, edengineering, spanch, edsm, Again, the list is far too long for this video. Check out my previous guide to 15 of the best tools and visit edututorials.com for a comprehensive list of all the best our wonderful community has to offer. While Elite is an amazing and expansive game covering many styles of gameplay, bug-free it is not. As such, there are many times we'll get stuck in our ship, our SRV, or even in a menu. Getting unstuck can be extremely frustrating, and at number 11, let's look at a few ways of getting ourselves out of a bind without the need to self-destruct. First up is getting stuck in the mail slot, something that is likely to happen in the big boys. By deploying and retracting your landing gear, you can generally free yourself without having the station send you to the rebuy screen. Getting stuck in a menu is also common. Here, you need only open the engineering menu from your right panel, then exit it to return to starport services. Finally, if you get your SRV stuck, you can exit game and launch in non-Horizons mode, spawning you in space above the planet. Exit game again and launch back in Horizons mode, and while you'll still be in space, your SRV will have returned to its bay, keeping you from returning to a station for another. We've talked about buying and engineering modules, but what about those special modules you've seen other commanders with that you couldn't find in outfitting? Prismatic shields, Packhound missiles, and pacifier frag cannons are just a few, and they, along with the nine others, are at number 12 on our list, pledging to a power play power. To obtain these modules, you'll need to be pledged to the power that offers them for at least four weeks, and then obtain 750 merits. As there are 11 different modules, it will take you roughly a year to earn them all, meaning if you aren't pledged to a power, you're just wasting time. As there are very few negatives to being pledged, if you aren't pledged to a power, pledge now, as you certainly are doing this wrong. 
Probably. As we close out our list, we've talked about jumping and scooping, combat and engineering, material gathering, and third-party utilities. At number one, we talked about efficient plotting, as jumping is the common denominator in Elite. But what we haven't yet talked about might be the most important thing that all players should unlock, bringing us to our final number, Lucky 13, the Guardian Frameshift Drive Booster. This is an optional internal module in classes 1 through 5 that adds as much as an additional 10.5 light years of range to any ship, regardless of its current outfitting. Once unlocked, it can be purchased as many times as you need, so long as the station sells the module. Unlocking it takes about 90 minutes for most, and while it isn't simple, it's something all but an absolute beginning player will be able to complete. If you haven't yet unlocked the Guardian Frameshift Drive Booster, you are certainly, definitely, absolutely doing it wrong. Probably. You're probably only doing a few of these 13 wrong, maybe none, but regardless of it being none or all 13, hopefully you learned something new and helpful. By no means is this list the full list of tips and tricks you could be using in Elite, and as such, I'd love to hear your favorites in the comments down below. I'll be sure to add them to a future list of 50 facts about Elite Dangerous so everyone can benefit from them, and I hope you'll teach me something I'm doing wrong too. This has been Commander Exegius of edtutorials.com, reminding you to fly dangerously, and thanks for watching. Probably. Click above if you'd like to learn 50 facts about Elite Dangerous, and if you're new, I hope you'll consider visiting edtutorials.com for guides from a wide array of top players, and that you'll consider subscribing, joining me on my weekly live streams, and supporting me here or on Patreon.